Okay, hey, you're back. Good, I'm here too. So I am back in Beautiful Birds, Treetop Treasures, and let's see. Nope. Next page. Did you know Lily Moth is a real thing? So here is a picture that we are going to be looking at today. And yeah, it's a real thing. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. Is that not just totally weird? I mean weird in a good way, in a colorful way, but just different. So I have taken some liberties with the colors. Um, so as you can tell, I went more towards this one, but I didn't go quite as dark because it's not all over as much. So anyway, um, let's get on with sharing what I've done. I used the Prismacolors again. Deco Yellow in 1011. Then Sunburst Yellow in 917. And I've already done this side. And I'm going to show you on this side. So if you're wanting to go along with me, or if you want to watch the whole thing and then go back, I don't think I changed that much for you not to be able to actual color along with today. The first color, that 1011, is everything that you see that's yellow. I left the inside edges here, around here and here, on both ends. You can kind of tell what I've done, but let's just go ahead and do the rest of the yellow or get into that some. So then the second yellow, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just add some color. This is a very easy page. Okay, just add your color, blend up. And you've got the other side to look at. So if I don't finish an area, you can easily pause, back it up, whatever you need to do to be able to finish each area. Now I did also use some Posca pens. So as you can see in each little area, so when you're coloring these in your yellow, leave these little bits, maybe not as much. And on this, I actually did both directions. I did from the bottom, and then I did down from the top. Yes, I have an ice pack on right now. My back is doing much better, thank you. We just got in from eating lunch out at Abuelos. It is a fabulous Mexican restaurant over in Plano. Um, we get out and just go wherever we want. So Plano, we had to go through part of Richardson to get to it. We actually went all the way to Fairview first, which was on the other side of Allen. So, yeah, we just get and go. We don't worry too much about how far something is um, as far as shopping. We had a $10 off coupon for J.C. Penney's and they closed the one in Plano. So we went ahead and went on over into um, Fairview, Allen area and did that Penney's and actually was able to apply it to part of our granddaughter's birthday Christmas. Her birthday is the day after Christmas, so I don't know which it'll be for yet, but anyway, got that taken care of and then went to Abuelos, and I always get their enchiladas. I hope you um, have already had your breakfast when you're watching this, or you're going to be hungry. Yeah, I get uh, two cheese and a beef 
enchilada with rice and beans. So good. And then it's smothered in chili con carne. And husband gets the enchiladas with steak. Um, he likes it really, really pink, but he doesn't want to chase it around the plate with a fork and knife. So, um, I tried a bite of it. It was okay. I'm not as much a steak person, but, um, as far as steaks go, it's probably better than most of the steak houses in the area. So, anyway, we did that, and then we decided it was come home and put on ice pack time. Been out long enough. Okay, so you can see I'm just coming through and getting these areas. Uh, let's see, on these across here, top and bottom, top and bottom, same thing here. Here it's just at the top, just at the top. Um, I want to say it's a little bit of both on this one. Sometimes it's hard to tell. So I just don't want to mess with all of it right now. Okay. I don't want to run out of time to do the video. Okay. To completely finish this. Next color. Still Prismacolor. All of these are Prismacolor. Pink Rose. 1018. Go around, do everything that's in the pink. All right. Second color is Process Red, 9.94. So now, like in this flower, see how this petal is on top of this one? So I am going to lightly go down the side. Just ever so lightly, light, light touch. So anywhere where one is on top of the other one, lightly go down the side. You can see the overlap right there is the area that tells you this one is on top. Those are the things you want to look for. But we can do the tips on all of them. There we go. I'm going to be doing something new next time on video. I am going to go back to paper again. I've done a video similar long time ago. Okay, I'm going to get lighter as I go out on each petal. And um, paper, just seeing where are the mountains, where are the valleys, what is the tooth? How can I manipulate the paper? What paper do I prefer to use on what projects? Does the paper differ if I'm on a different project? So I know we have several colorists that watch my channel that um, print out all of their own pages. So, um, it's not going to be as interesting for y'all probably because you've already been doing this for a while, but for anybody else that's new to it, just the basics, basics and picking paper and water mountains and valleys. And I'm going to be doing that next time. And then the time after that, I'm going to flip and totally do something that I've never done before and it is going to be a coloring process but it's just going to be really different and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I will show you a sample of it at the end of next time's video but um, we're just going to kind of leave it at that for now. It is something that I've been exploring in my art, and um, I've really come to enjoy it. You will need paper and some sort of a black pen or marker. 
when we get to that lesson. And again, I will, I will talk about it some next time. When next we meet, I will let the cat out of the bag on that one. And some of you won't even care, but it's just a fun little play thing to do. And um, you can even do it with kids. In fact, we all did it as kids. So, again, I'm telling too much. It's going to be a little, a little secret surprise. So, anyway, um, let's see. Going on with this, and you can see I'm just going from the tips in. Just doing that all the way around. And I see right here something I missed. So I don't want to lose that. I'm going to come over, grab my pencil, and do those. Don't worry about those. Play like, play like that never happened. Okay, you saw nothing. Nothing to see. Move right along. All right, so just finishing up here with this color. Now that one did not blend nearly as well as the others, so I'm going to go back to my first color, and I'm just going to blend that. Just back and forth. Easy blend. Just keep working it. It'll blend. Okay, and that's fine. All right, next is going to be the white. We're going to take, this is the regular PC 938 white, and we're just doing these right through here. And then all of these little bits down here, all the way around. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with 1054. Now this is warm gray, 50%. And all I'm going to do, in fact, I'm going to move it out on the pencil some so I don't have as much control. So I have to go lighter touch. Real light. Just really light on just the ends. Okay? All the little ends get that. And again, the wonderful thing about YouTube and videos is that you can pause anytime you need to. If you need to come back with the white and do some blending, do it. On these, it's all the tips here and then each corner. And you can see it just takes a touch. And then if you need to blend those, come back in with your white and simply color it in again. And that should finish giving you your blend. Okay? On these, just go on the ends. Just a little blend. Okay, so go all the way across those then too. Same gray, do all of all of the gray that you see, all of it, with the gray that we just did, that warm gray, 50%. Then for the second color on those, I moved up to the 90%, which is 1058. All right, and I'm going to come in and lightly okay also this the antenna and then I just come in on one end and just deepen and do that all the way okay on this one because this one has lots of little bits 
I'm doing these little areas and then coming out some. How many found the video on Lost Edges helpful? Just drop me a comment if little things like that are helpful. Same thing here. We're going around the outside and fade out. Yeah, I um, there's just so many things from my painter days as a decorative artist that apply in coloring also that um, are just fun things to pass on. Now through here, you can always look at the other one too and see, but it's the same thing. It's all these little V's and what's on top or bottom. So pay attention to what is on top, what's on bottom, and where your shading should be. I'm actually coloring on the one that's on the bottom. That's where your shading goes. Okay. But see how it doesn't look as flat as when we started. Okay, and then I just kind of do a little bit right through the middle. And it just kind of pushes that down in there. On these, it's kind of the same thing. We're going to do the tip. And then this one's on bottom. This one's underneath it. This one's underneath. And just keep going. And you're going to do that on all the little sections. On these through here, I just do the V area and then I'm doing the little tips, all the little tips all the way across. On this, the bottom piece. On this, I did the top and bottom. Okay, so just finish all of that out. Then we're going to get to the background. We have Light Aqua 992, all the little bits that are left. And then Aquamarine 905. On here, you're going to come in and basically do the ends. Let's see, on this one, I did the other end, so I'm going to go in and make it even. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go sit in my chair at the couch because I did one side already and I'm going to follow along with my finger. This is from my painting days. If you'll use your finger to keep up, don't trust your eyes just to bounce back and forth because by the time you get from one piece to the other piece, you'll have forgotten what you were doing. It's, you know, it's just the way that it goes. And then just somewhere there. And it really doesn't matter all that much where you're putting your lights and darks in this because it's an all over. Just be uniform. So like on this one, I did the furthest tip, the one that's on the bottom. So as I'm doing this, let's just make sure that I'm doing the one on the bottom. And it's nothing more than two or three little marks. Okay? And do that. So, you know, you can just follow all along or just do it yourself. And whatever you do, be pretty consistent with it. Now, the thing I wanted to have time for, I tried the Posca 
yellow. Now this is the number two. It's a 3M. I tried coming along here. And you can see this. But you cannot see it as much when I came up through here, which I did also. So then after I did this, I said, okay, what else, you know, are there better answers? And I came back through with a white one. So I'm not going to come through and do all these because I'm not done coloring and I don't want to drag my hand through it. I will tell you, okay, yellows, um, you know what, don't do what I did. Because I did yellows like here and then along the edges. Pick a spot, if you're going to do it, pick a spot that's convenient for you and just keep it the same. doesn't have to match mine. So if you want to do all of, say, just these tips, then do just those tips. You don't have to do this side too. If you want to do... You know, whatever you're doing, just make sure you keep it uniform. Now on that one, I did also do this one. So later I will come back and do that so that they're equal on both sides. The other thing, I did some pinks. And they did not show up. So I'm not even going to repeat the pinks I had done because it didn't even show. The white, now this is that pen I used once before. This is the Pitt Artist Pen, Faber-Castell. When I use this, I check the end to make sure it's white because whatever I used it on last could stain it. So make sure you're in white. But then I came through and I started doing my dots. This showed up. So this is where I came in then and started doing what was on bottom and the tips and then I came around on this side, and I did here, and then that tip, and I really did a lot with this pen, and this pen worked. But you can see again, it's hard to make sure I've got the same thing going on unless I do it right then. I did try some down in here, and it worked a bit but that area was just almost too small. Did it work here? Yes. Did I get going a little crazy on it? Oh yeah. And it worked really well here. But see how simple this is. I'm not going down each row and everything else. Here, I got a little crazy and went down every row. Every row again. Don't have to do that. Do whatever it is. See, like... A couple is enough, but because I did more, now I gotta feel like I gotta keep it even with what I did on the other side, so I will do them all again. And there is something addicting about just making dots. So whatever you do on one side, just go ahead and do it on the other side and keep it as even as you can, all right? Okay, so that's basically it. I got it in. Whew. Um, obviously, I have a lot to finish, but now I've got to wait till that dries before I can go back in and finish all mine. But um, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I've got ice on my back again. I'm, I'm trying real hard to take care of myself. But um, yeah, it's, it's starting to hurt a little bit. So I know to stop. Um, okay, so next time, paper, valleys, hills, divots, looking at some pens, crayons, pencils, watercolor, markers. We're just going to do a review of different utensils, so to speak, and surfaces. So be sure you come back next time, and I will see you then. Thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye.